Hi, I'm Rob, and in this Gems of War video, I'm going to take a look in the Soul Forge and tell you what I think is good and bad in there. As well as that, we'll also be taking a look at the weekly Glory Troop and telling you how good that is, because it's an absolute stonker this week. A really good one. The Bane of Mercy. An absolute direct counter to Mercy. It's fantastic. Mercy converts purple to yellow. And she starts with full mana. This does the exact opposite, converts yellow to purple, but also starts with full mana. So it's a direct counter to what Mercy does and can be cast immediately if Mercy had luck on her side regarding that conversion. Mercy also gives life. So the fact that this gives attack to the first ally means when you cast this as well, if Mercy casts and gives that life bonus, then a single skull hit or something and you can actually take away most of the benefit that Mercy even gave on the life. So it is a full and complete counter to Mercy. You really like this a lot. Uses yellow and blue, so can't use it on all the Guild Wars days because that's when Mercy can be an absolute pain, but still absolutely superb. Pick this thing up, absolutely for sure, all the way to a mythic level if you can. Always good to get these troops to level 20. It's going to help your power levels on your kingdoms in the long run. Anyway, I got fired from my job at the bank today. An old lady came in and asked me to check her balance, so I pushed her over. <laughs> right, so forward, let's take a look at the weapons first. Right, <clears throat> what have we got? I'm going to go over the ones that are here all the time. They are in previous Soul Forge videos. First up is Doomed Crossbow. Love this one. Do like these weapons, these Doomed weapons that do damage to all and transform a colour to Doom Skulls. They're my favourite type of Doomed weapon. Absolutely superb. Deal a magic based damage to all enemies. Really good for just doing damage to all as it suggests, but that also hits stealthy opponents, which is really good and gets a boost to one. Plus one per tempering level. Transform blue gems to doom skulls. I prefer that to the just the generation of of skulls based on the uh, amount of, diff of of colors of enemies and stuff like that. You can see clearly if this is going to work or not before you cast it, and you can see if you're going to get an, an extra turn. Stuff like that. Really, really good. If the enemy has a doom, create five more. Gain three mana for each red enemy. So you can use this on Guild Wars attack day or defense. Really good. Do like it a lot. Jacko Lantern. Inflict one to four status effects on an enemy and explodes four gems of their colour. It was okay a little while ago, but um, becoming rather less effective these days as other weapons come in and basically do a better job. Scythe McScythe Face. Sounds like the sort of weapon I would name something. Choose a colour and explode four gems of that colour. Deal magic based damage, magic plus one that is, damage to all enemies of that colour. So basically the more enemies of a single colour or the same colour you have on the opposition, the more damage you can do. It's not going to generate that much mana, but hey, it's a low level weapon and still may be effective if you don't have much. Seal of Sin. Magic based damage to an enemy boosted by Sin of Marage allies, then create a mix of six red and purple gems for each Sin of Marage ally. So this uses green and blue generates red and purple so just make sure that when you have your team set up for that that the other allies use red and purple to generate to benefit from that mana generation because you're not going to get any yourself scythe of sin remove all red gems this is the kind of what i call anti sin of marriage because basically sin of marriage they like red you remove all the red gems with no effect so make sure your team doesn't rely on red in a big way Otherwise, you're going to be hindering yourself at the same time. Then deal a damage to the enemy based on your magic, boosted by the gems removed. If the enemy is from Sin of Marage or if the battle is in Sin of Marage, deal a double damage. So for those fights where you're against Sin of Marage enemies or in Sin of Marage, this actually can be pretty effective. Keystone. Nothing to do with the cops. Keystone cops. Gain a barrier. Give magic based life to an ally and then cleanse and enchant them. Again, it doesn't sound much, but if you're a newer player and you've just picked something like this up, I remember how effective these low level sort of um, the, the cheaper weapons were in the early days. They still were effective, so not to write that kind of thing off entirely. Doomed Magi. Create four brown gems plus one gem per tempering level. 
So basically untempered, this is not going to be that great at generating mana, but it's higher end when it's fully tempered, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So gets better as you get better basically. And it also gives armor to all purple allies, so best in an all purple team, it uses purple itself. And if the enemy has a doom, eliminate all armor from a random enemy. So fairly situational, but pretty decent at the same time. Any others? No, that is your lot. That was nice and easy. Oh no, Bane of Gods. Explode! Magic plus one purple gems. Grant a random status effect to all Sin of Mirage allies. Then summon a Sin of Mirage troop. I do love these explodey, mana generate summony weapons. They're absolutely superb. So, so flexible and really good in many teams. So, absolutely normally worth picking up those. Some of these weapons are often good in the um, weekly world events. So, we'll see about that later on. Now the Mythics. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. First up is Mamba Zira. She's got six arms and she just wangs them around all over the place, just slapping and punching people. Does damage to six random enemies and it is a random amount of damage as well, between in my case 28 and 57. So potential to go above 300 damage, but also potential to do about half that. And that's what I don't like about this kind of spell. I'm not a big fan of the spells that do a random amount of damage. In some cases, like Tina 9000, it's probably still worth doing because Tina's spell is so good because it's true damage and she gains a bunch of armor at the same time. But this is just not enough to, um, to basically be worth it for me. I, some people may like it. It does have a really good third trait. All green allies gain one to all stats at the start of each turn and spell reduction from spell armor is decent as well. But Overall, not a huge fan of this kind of spell, personally, but it is a playstyle thing. Amarok deals a good amount of damage to an enemy, and there's a 10% chance to devour them, boosted by red gems and burning enemies. So the more burning enemies you got, the more red gems on the board, the better chance you get of that devour. And if the enemy dies, create 9 gems, 9 red gems. And Amarok uses red, so basically it can get charged up really quickly, sometimes straight away again, and get to do it all over again. And it's um, a pretty cool troop as well. I like these, these traits. Reduce damage from scars by 50% is good. And burn and stun a random enemy when matching four or more gems actually helps the devour chance of its spell. So in a red heavy team that generates tons of red, Amarok is actually really, really good. Ooh, a Wackenian Weaver is here. Fantastic troop, one of the best mythics in the game. Still top five for me. Webs all enemies. When you web an enemy, you take their mag magic right down to zero. Now for the vast majority of troops, this is gonna make their spell useless. It's gonna do like very minimal damage, no matter how powerful they were in the first place. So that is really, really good. And deal with a good amount of true damage to the last two enemies. So that's a good way of doing damage to the last two enemies if they're stealthy, for example. And if an enemy dies, explode 15 gems. The other benefit of that is if they die, you get a load of mana gen. But also if you've had someone die in your team already, there's a 75% chance to summon a web spinner when an enemy dies. As well as that, it's impervious, immune to all status effects, devour, lycanthropy, and mana burn. And it's stealthy, so this thing can't be targeted. So a good troop to have in, in your team if you want to just, I've basically, I've, I remember in the early days when I used to use this, the amount of games that I won when I was just down to my Arachnian Weaver and just came back into it because of this last trait on its own, just spawning a web spinner and things like that are just, yeah, fantastic troop. This is a really nice. Scardy freezes and mana burns the first two enemies and knock, the f knock them to the back, to last position. Summon Queen Mab. It's uh, Scardy. The boat has sailed for you, I'm sorry, but um, it was never that great in the first place, to be honest. But um, with all the troops that have come on since then and the power creep in the game, with everybody getting a bit more powerful and stuff, she's slipped even further into the sort of useless bracket. Mana burn. So many enemies now immune to mana burn. That part is becoming irrelevant. Freeze is still good, but there's tons of other ways to get freeze really easily. Knock them to last position may not always be useful either because you want to finish them off rather than Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. And Queen Mab, you can stick Queen Mab in the team if you want her, so. Create an Ice Storm at the start of every turn is good. But overall, Scaldi, yeah, not so fantastic. 
All right, let's take a quick gander at the legendaries. Usually say don't craft legendaries, you're better off holding on to your diamonds because legendaries turn up in chests way easier than mythics do, but there's the odd case where you get someone absolutely fantastic. Baphomet, I do actually really like this. Reflect 25% of skull damage is decent. That is deal a triple a skull damage versus burning enemies. That is huge. And the spell is good as well. Deal magic based damage to three random enemies. And if the enemy is burning, deal a double damage. So the key to this is obviously, it kind of sounds obvious, but get something in your team that basically burns the opposition. Because then you are absolutely laughing. He's not a laughing, he looks a bit grumpy. But basically, you're going to deal double damage to three enemies when you hit with Baphomet. And um, you can get also that awesome triple skull damage to burning enemies. So Baphomet, actually very good. As is King Bloodhammer. Deal magic-based damage to the two strongest enemies and transform all the blue gems to Doom Skulls to boost the damage. Again, it's really nice being able to see what the board's going to do before you cast that. You can see clearly if you're going to get that transforming of blue to Doom Skulls before you cast it, so it's not random. You can. The only downside to these kind of weapons is you have to wait sometimes to, for the board to be in your favour. That's the pros and cons of these weapons. The, um, sometimes you have to wait for these. The ones that just generate skulls and things like that is in the lap of the gods and do you feel lucky. But um, yeah, King Bloodhammer, really good. Unlike Gog and God, exactly. He may scratch his bonds, either deal magic based damage to an enemy and spend all my gold to boost the damage, or deal the, uh, the same amount of damage to all enemies and gain 80 gold. Not again, again, not a fan of the random nature of this, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Garn Knock. All Orc allies start with 50% mana is the main reason to pick this, and gain three to all skills if in last position is a good place to have it because it has a summon. You will find troops that have a summon quite often in the last place, just as an annoyance to the opposition team. Then deals one true damage to all allies, then creates seven red and seven brown gems, boosted by Orc allies, and has that already mentioned summon. So there it is, there's the troops, but who is going to get my super not coveted Mythic of the Week? Well, I do really like Amarok, certainly in a lot of delves, it makes mince meat of certain high level delves, but um, it can't not give it to Arachnian Reaver. She is so good. Yes, it's a she. Don't know how you can tell, but it is a she. Very good spell, webs all enemies, true damage, explodes gems, has a summon, impervious, stealthy, it's obscene, she's superb. Get a reckoning weave if you don't have her already, absolutely the mythic of the week without a shadow of a doubt. But there's the Soul Forge video, if you enjoyed it, why not bash that like and subscribe button, I'll be back a bit later on with my world event team, so maybe check back for that. But most of all, thanks for watching this one, and I'll catch you again later, bye for now.